are getting a bit frustrated. They're standing around these bases. There's negotiations going on, trying to get the Ukrainian troops inside to surrender their arms, and it simply isn't happening. So there might be a question that they don't know exactly what to do yet. Um, at the same time, and receiving less intention, uh, attention in areas such as Kharkiv, and Donetsk, and Luhansk, we've seen pro-Russian um, groups, demonstrations, if you will, um, effectively assaulting many pro-Maidan, pro-Kiev uh, demonstrators who have taken over some of the local government buildings. Uh, and this may be another uh, form of provocation that's going on. We do know that there have been Russian instigators. Protection of the highest power in the so it's a very tense situation. There's a number of different places where this could break out. There was a very long conversation between Obama and Putin, a 90-minute call, for instance, which suggests that uh, diplomacy and certainly the preferred option. But if we do start to see some form of gunfire that takes place in the region, what's the outcome? Does the West come running to Ukraine's rescue? I think that's highly doubtful. And the main reason behind that is that uh, Russia has the bomb. Um, there's a big question, while Western forces could deploy to Crimea and even to eastern Ukraine very quickly, uh, I have no doubt would make short work of any Russian forces actually engaged there. The question is what comes next. Uh, such an outcome would be politically devastating for Vladimir Putin, and he would have a, an extremely strong temptation to deploy even a, a tactical nuclear strike against any sort of NATO forces in the region. All of the statements that we've heard so far from Secretary of State Kerry, from the Europeans, are that military intervention is simply not on the table here. This is not something that's being considered. The Western response is being articulated in terms of targeted economic sanctions, visa bans, these sorts of ways of putting pressure on the regime within uh, Russia as a punishment for this action. But these sanctions don't carry any weight unless the Europeans also sign up, right? Uh, precisely. I mean, well, it's not exactly the, the broad-based economic sanctions. Those are important. But you can also do things such as visa bans, uh, targeting top Russian officials, certain top oligarchs. Um, as one person put it, you know, if they can't send their, their children to Eaton and Harrow, well, then what are all the billions good for? Um, also, I mean, you know, if you're a billionaire in Russia, you know enough not to trust that nation's financial system. They're putting their money abroad. So the question, again, is, you know, if you can squeeze the right people who are supporting Putin, who his support he does rely on to stay in power, will that topple the regime? Will that place enough political pressure to make this very much hurt? So one question which would be interesting, just yeah. following what you're saying in terms of toppling the regime, etc., etc. Mm -hmm. From an investor standpoint, these markets are relatively illiquid right now. Mm -hmm. And I suppose they're looking, rather than at the day-to-day, -day, they're probably thinking, what's this going to look like in two or three months' time? In your view, given the illiquidity of markets, what should investor do looking three months ahead right now? Uh, three months ahead, it's, uh, it's very difficult to say <laughs> what's actually going to happen here. Three months, we could be looking at a different government in Moscow. We could be looking at a different government in Kiev. Um, part of the actual... Uh, objective here in Crimea is probably to create enough economic chaos uh, in Ukraine to simply make it economically collapse, uh, to undermine the revolutionary government. Um, I'd say that's something that we'll be, be looking at for science for Maplecroft and kind of, you know, what the Ukrainian market is looking like. What does the IMF package look like? Uh, from an investor standpoint, I'd say it's probably best to hold back for the moment. Um, you know, uh, prediction is an uncertain science at the best of times, but there's so much uncertainty here at this point. Two to three months might as well be two to three hundred years. Okay. Um, thanks so much for joining us and giving us a perspective on the story. Dr. Darren McDowell, senior analyst at Maplecroft. Alan, you're going to stay with us. We'll come back to you with some questions. We'll also look into reaction to HSBC's China manufacturing PMI, which fell to 48.5 in February, up fractionally from the early